Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode on the MedEd page on how to ace the USMLE. I have two phenomenal guests here. Both are from King Edward Medical University from Pakistan, and they both aced the USMLE. They both placed in the 99th percentile on both step one and step two. So I'm excited to hear how they did this. So uh, we have Ali Hasnain and Osama Anwar. Both of you, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Owan, for this opportunity. I'm really excited about this session, and thank you for having us again. Uh, sure. Uh, it, it's an honor for us to be with you, Dr. Rawan. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll start with you, Osama. You know, in terms of your daily routine and what you did to prepare, you know, what was your day like? Like, how much time did you spend doing questions? How much time did you spend reading? Uh, what was that like? And was it different for step one and step two? Uh, okay, sure. So, yes, uh, actually, there was a slight difference uh, in the way I used to study for step one and step two. Because in step one, you have to go through first aid and you will questions both of them. So I used to spend, you know, about uh, three fourths of my day to actually go through first aid. And then the one fourth uh, time I used to spend doing you will questions and other question marks to actually study. But it was different uh, in step two because in step two, there is no specific book that you study. Uh, mostly it's you will questions, it's question banks. So in step two, what I used to do was that uh, I basically used to do, uh, you know, two blocks or three blocks of uh, UL questions of each 40 uh, questions. Uh, so and after that, uh, in the remaining time, I used to go through, you know, some notes and flashcards that I made from the same questions uh, from the past few days. So that was the routine. And mainly I used to study between, uh, you know, 12 to 15 hours in the dedicated time period in the when I was in like one to two months uh, into my actual exam date. So yeah, that was my routine. Awesome. Well, it sounds like a really intense uh, routine, but it, it looks like it worked out for you. And Ali, you know, how did you prepare for this test mentally? Because a lot of it is psychological, you know, getting your mind ready to actually take this exam and sort of not get psyched out. What was your mindset and uh, how did you tackle that aspect of it? So that's a very good question. So my mindset was keep it simple. So that was my mindset the entire time. You know, uh, while attempting the practice questions, you know, you world and emboss. One thing I realized that I I was trying to overcome complicate things. Like I was going out of the way to make answers to make diagnosis. So I just told myself that I have to make and keep things simple. Like even the hardest and challenging questions can be solved if you break them into you know different components and then analyze and try to link them. Like the you the board exams don't you know don't test you on super rare diseases or syndrome. They just test you on basic concepts. So just you, you have to tell yourself that whatever comes is the basic principles that we need to apply in our question, in our, you know, while solving the questions. And another thing I told myself that I need to, you know, apply the maximum, which I have learned during my preparation. Like it is totally okay and natural to dream of, a, you know, to 60 to 70 score. But do not study with this mindset that I have to score big because this will add extra pressure on you. If you're going to the exam center thinking that I need to score to 70 or to 60, that will compromise your performance in an expert that it will add extra pressure of performing big. So just keep calm and you just do your best. So that was my mindset the entire time. I think that's great advice. I think, you know, just being present in the moment and in the question, you know, and just focusing on the question itself, not worrying about, you know, how you did on a previous question or, oh my God, I probably got 10 questions wrong. I'm going to get a 240 or 250 now. I think just being present with yourself is huge and uh, I think will really help. So I absolutely love that advice. And, you know, Osama, can you tell me a little bit about resources? There's so many resources out there from question banks, Pathoma, first aid books, what do you think were the best resources for you when you studied? Uh, yes, of course. So I will basically give you a list uh, of the resources that I used in step one and basically prioritize them, how I prioritize them basically. So for step one, I basically, uh, the first, uh, my first priority was to focus on first day and you were questions because these are the two most important resources that are being used in uh, step one. I personally use them and uh, they work very well for me. 
other sources that can actually supplement your preparation. In step one, they include Sketchy Micro for microbiology, Sketchy Pharma for people who have, uh, you know, difficulty in pharma. And, you know, um, along with that, some people also use Anki. So uh, there are Anki decks that can, that can help you actually memorize some first year concepts. So people also use uh, Boards and Beyonds lectures to understand first year and also uh, Petroma lectures. So, but the two most important resources for step one include first aid and uh, you world question bank. So for step two, the most important question, uh, the most important resource is basically you world, uh, you world question bank. And uh, other than that, you can use other question banks as well, because uh, in you world, uh, in basically step two, what you have to do is that you have to practice as much questions as possible. So the number one resource would be you world. Number two resource would be MBOSS or any other question bank to supplement that. And number three, it would be up to date, uh, basically to, you know, uh, uh, research different concepts and topics and keep your knowledge basically up to date. Yeah. Awesome. No, that sounds like a really comprehensive set of resources. And, you know, I'm moving to you, Adi. You know, in terms of questions themselves, you know, how did you stratify how to use questions and pace yourself? Like, did you do questions twice? Did you read all the answers to the questions, even if you got them right? How did that sort of work out and play out for you? Uh, so for step one, I did you world twice, but I think that didn't help me that much because during my second pass, I already knew the answers to, you know, questions. So my advice would be just do one pass and do it thoroughly. And for like, as, as far as the answers are concerned, you don't need to read every answer. Because sometimes you know things and you know things are very simple. But when you are confused between two options, like for example, there is a scenario like there is Mullerian agenesis and androgen insensitivity syndrome. So these are two very confusing topics which can be you know, tested on exams and they have subtle differences. So you need to make a separate flashcard for such questions that okay, I need to figure out the differences between two. But if you if the questions are straightforward, you don't have to worry about them. Like just keep them simple, and you know don't try to you know overdo questions. Like don't try to repeat them. So basically, that was my strategy in step one. In step two, it was simple. I just did one pass, and that's it. Because in step two, you already know the basics. So just do the one pass thoroughly, and you know try to link everything. Whatever you do, try to link with other systems. Like if you are doing cardio, try to link it with Respo, renal. So that's how it went for me. Awesome. Awesome. No, that's great. I think that's a nice perspective because that's something that, you know, I always struggled with too when I was, you know, studying, you know, how often should I do questions? Should I do them twice? Uh, so, 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 so very nice. You know, and Osama, did you ever take like an NBME official practice test? Because, you know, I did that for step two, but I didn't do it for step one. So I'm curious to see, you know, did you do that? Did it help you? Uh, when did you do it? You know, did you do it like a couple weeks before you actually took the real test and was it, you know, beneficial for you if you did do it? Uh, yes, of course. So I, I did take, uh, uh, an official NVM exam when I was about 70 to 80% into my, you know, question bank preparation. So it actually allowed me to assess where did I actually stand in my preparation. And, you know, after that, I, uh, I took uh, you world self-assessment one and you world self-assessment two in step one and step two, both of them. So I actually prefer uh, you world self-assessments over, uh, you know, NBMEs because I think that they're slightly uh, more predictive of the actual score and they are more in line with the actual pattern of the questions that you get in the real exam. I see. Awesome. Okay, good, good. And, you know, Ali, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on how long you studied for step one versus step two, because, you know, at, in the United States, we only get like, you know, four to six weeks of study for step one after the end of our second year. And then step two, you know, pretty similarly, we take it on a, on a month that, you know, we have an elective time or something, but maybe as an IMG, you're studying longer, you know, maybe months. So I'm curious to hear, you know, how long did you study for the step one and the step two exam? Okay. So I took my step one during final year of my med school. So I had to manage my, you know, classes, my or rotations and my uh, step one preparation. So it took me almost nine months on average. But in step two, I was, you know, I was graduated, but still I had other things to do. Like I was doing a job and I was, you know, trying to learn research. So step one was nine months and step two was almost six months for me. But 
here's another thing I would like to add that do not take break after your step one. Most of the people do what do they take break after step one. Like I take a, took a break after my step one because things start evaporating as soon as you are done with step one. The first trade is quite volatile. So just make sure you do two tests in a rapid succession, one after another. Like if you're done with step one, just start preparing after two weeks, you know, your step one, step two. So there's no need to take a break, you know, a long break between two, these two tests. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And, you know, Osama, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, you know, how you identified and attack weaknesses, because that was something that I struggled with. You know, I would, you know, maybe I was weak in biochemistry, but at the same time, you want to make sure you get through all the questions. You only have a limited amount of time. You want to read all the first aid. So, you know, how was it that you were able to identify your weaknesses and then go ahead and attack them to make sure that on test day you were ready? Okay, sure. So there are three main uh, types of, you know, weaknesses that you need to understand about yourself. So first of all, there could be a lack in your knowledge. Second, there could be a lack in applying that knowledge or the lack of technique, basically. And the third one is time management. So you learn both of uh, all these three, three things uh, while doing your real world question bank. So while doing your real world question bank, uh, what you can do is that basically you can assess the questions that you are getting wrong. You can analyze them and you can see whether you are getting them due to lack of knowledge or technique or due to time management skills. And based on that, you have to focus your you know uh, efforts on either of these three things, which one is basically uh, the weakness for you. So another thing is that whenever you take a self-assessment like NBME or UO self-assessment, so they give you an, a detailed analysis. So they give you that, okay, so these subjects are weak or these systems are weak. So based on that analysis, you can actually target those specific subjects and systems and use these three uh, points that I have told you to focus your efforts on. So this is how I used to identify my weaknesses and you know um, target those. So yeah, I guess that's it. Well, I think that's excellent. I mean, I, I wish I talked to you before I took my U.S. assembly. Maybe it would have made a difference for me. Uh, you know, Ali, I think, you know, if you had to give, you know, one single advice, one single piece of advice for, you know, U.S. assembly aspirants on how to ace the exam, what would that be? Well, the most single advice, in my opinion, is just consistency, consistency, and consistency. That's the main thing which makes you stand out. Like, if you're consistent, you will do it. Apart from that, you need to work on ground concepts. Like, do not try to memorize everything on your world or first year, like some people suggest. You obviously need to memorize the facts, like the names of, of the enzymes or the drug names and their mechanism of action. But apart from that, don't memorize any, everything. Like, just stay focused on the concepts and, you know, try to visualize while doing the questions. If you're doing, for example, cardio questions, Try to visualize the heart structures that how afterload or preload is, is increased or decreased in certain situations. So, so that's how you should approach a question. You should visualize thing in your mind. About, you know, uh, except you know when you're doing things like you don't need to you know cram things out, right? So, the last thing I I would like to mention is trust yourself. That's that's how you will make it. Just tell yourself that you are the best candidate out there. And you are going to do amazing. So I think that's that's it. Yeah, no, I think that's that's pretty awesome. You know, you, a lot of it is psychological. You know, believing in yourself is really important. You know, if you tell yourself that you can do it, you will do it and you will succeed. So I absolutely love that advice. You know, Osama, if you could do anything differently, you know, is there anything that you would do differently? Or if you, if you look back and think on, okay, could I have improved something? You know, what maybe could that have been? Uh, yes, actually, there is uh, one such thing. So just like Ali told that uh, there should be no gap between step one and step two. So I actually took a gap of like four to five months between my step one and step two because of my final professional exams. Okay. And because of that, what happened was that um, it I felt that uh, there was some knowledge that actually evaporated during that time period. I had to put extra effort now uh, on the first aid and, you know, on questions in step two to you know understand that so actually it, it extended my my study period for step two by like one to two months so like i wish that i had started it just after my step one and prepared for it but unfortunately i could not and 
yeah i guess i guess that's it but other than that i don't think uh, i would like to do anything different good good no i think that sounds good that's a very reasonable approach and you know just as a last question to you ali you know how this was something that i struggled with you know how do you just balance your time in terms of you know there's so much you have to do you have to get through you know us assembly world questions you have to read all of first aid you have to watch these pathoma videos you know look at all these resources how do you balance your time efficiently so that you're able to succeed on the exam? Okay, so for step one, initially, you know, there are two modes on your work. There is tutor mode and there is test mode. So initially, I used to do questions on tutor mode, one question at a time. So I would, you know, just read the question and answer it and then read the explanation and read that part from first rate. And then I would continue with the other questions. But later on, I changed this technique. Like what, what I did, I used to solve one or two blocks in the morning and then I will give myself a break and then I will revise my first aid. Like I will divide a system of first aid into a number of pages which I have to do in a day. So I will just revise the first aid and at the end of the day, I will review the questions which I did in the morning. Or And while reviewing the questions, you only just need to focus on the wrong ones and the question you mark. And in mark questions, you need to focus what caused, caused you the confusion? Like between which two options were you confused? So you, you just need, need to make, you know, clarity between these two options which confused you. Apart from this, just read them and, you know, start a different blog. And as far as first aid is concerned, you have to at least revise twice best because it is quite volatile as I mentioned. So that's how I did in step one. In step two, it was simple. Like there was no first aid it was only you world and emboss. So I used to do like 40 to 80 questions per day. I would solve them on time mode. Like I improved my time management and then I would review them later on. Just like I mentioned, uh, first of all, I would do mark and then wrong. And then, you know, the questions I got right. So that's how I did. it. Awesome. No, thank you so much. I think, uh, I love the fact that you did a little bit of self-reflection, you know, figuring out, you know, okay, the questions are marked, you know, why, well, why, what caused me the confusion? I think that self-reflection is very healthy to allow you to, you know, overcome those barriers and then ultimately succeed. Thank you both so much uh, for this very informative session. I think this will help a lot of people in their preparation for, you know, what is obviously a very nervous exam and a high stake exam. So uh, really appreciate all the uh, insights and pearls that you gave all of us today. Yeah, it's been an honor, sir. It's been, you know, we love the session. We love talking to you. And, you know, you are the best mentor out there. You always try your best to help students. Like, you came to Pakistan, you know, and, you know, try to help us and try to mentor us. So, you know, my advice to all the IMGs out there is do follow the channel. And if you have any questions, do let him know and he'll make sure that he makes videos for you. Yeah. So, thank you so much, Dr. Wan. Yeah, uh, again, I would also like to add one more thing. My single most advice to all of you is to get a mentor. Okay, so just like Dr. Awan is our mentor, so he has been helping amazingly. He has been helping us day and night. And, you know, he has been actually mentoring students all over the world. So it's very important uh, what kind of mentor you get. And you have to get a mentor. You have to respect that mentor. And you have to talk to your mentor about... Uh, your next steps in your USMLE journey because it's a whole journey and you have to have some kind of, you know, uh, mentorship above you uh, where you can look uh, uh, look up to and, you know, get your concerns sorted. So, yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Awan, for mentoring us and for helping IMGs all over the world. And, yeah, I hope that your channel grows up uh, exponentially because, you know, it has been helping many, many people out there. So, yeah, thank, thank you for having us today. Thank you so much. And I promise I didn't tell Samar Ali to say any of those things, but, but I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much and uh, great job, everyone.